Hi hey guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report, where we talk about classical Kung Fu and its application. We've been getting some questions about the classical Xing Yi splitting fist, or the metal fist, right? Today I want to talk about some of his training method, but before that, I'm going to show you a little bit of his application. See you when we get back. Chris, sir, please come in. So, the splitting fist, there's a million ways you can use it. So. We're not gonna go over all of it, we just, I'll give you a couple of ideas today. So, let's say we work it off a basic warm-up drill against a punch, like a warm-up exercise, right? Usually when you do like a grab hit, usually this kind of technique like a lap style, people can block really easily. If you want it to block, it's not that hard. See, even if I go fast, you can block it. And he doesn't have to block with the back hand, he can block with the front hand like a bomb zone. See? But if I use the idea of the splitting down, and he tries to block, it's almost impossible because he's losing his root. And it's not because I'm pulling his arm down, it's got nothing to do with the angle. Because even if I pull his arm down hard, it doesn't mean anything. He's not going anywhere. Even if I try harder, it doesn't matter. It's all upper body strength. That's not how splitting works. It's because it's from the Dante and the back and also synchronizing the joints, which I'll talk about later. And it's easy to block the guy. And it goes good in combination after I split it with the other fist in Shin Yi, right? But even though he can't block, he can easily shoulder roll. Okay? And when he does that, he can block. So the splitting can also go into an arm bar. And there's nothing special about the arm bar either. Every martial art has it. Again, the specialty of Shin Yi is not in this technique, but in the power generation. Because if Chris doesn't let me do it, he's a lot stronger than me. I can't move him, right? But again, if I do it from the Dante and the splitting, then even if he doesn't let me, it doesn't matter. And the last thing I'm going to say, as a basic idea is, the idea of rising, drilling, turning, and falling, when you're first learning it, it's a big movement, but when you actually, later on, you can do it in the size of, like a golf ball. If you press grab, can't move, right? But this idea of splitting can be done really small, where when he grabs with that one, you can easily break out of the grab. He grabs with two, you can easily split the guy. Right? And when I grab his head, that's also done with the falling splitting energy. Like from here, if I grab his head, he doesn't let me move him, right? If I do it from the body, then when I'm here, it's really easy to put my weight on. So when we get back, we'll talk a bit about how to develop this power. Thanks, Chris. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's short demo. Um, before I go, I want to mention one thing, and that is usually when I read emails about some of the demonstration of Shen Yi, it's about the movement, right? Like today we did the splitting, and people argue about different lineages and exactly where the hand should be and blah, blah, blah. When I first learned Shen Yi, I learned it from my Sifu Mike Smith and the Five Fists. Sifu, if you're watching this, thank you. But later on, um, I also got a chance to study by Xi Gong Tang who was the disciple of Wang Zai, the founder of each one. So he actually learned each one first, and then later on, he learned the Shen Yi. So his version of Shen Yi, then some of the fists that I learned from him, does not look like classical Shen Yi at all. And one of the things he emphasized that made a big impact on me was, don't fuss about the how detail and how well you can look when you do Shen Yi, or how precise the form is and all that stuff. Worry only about the energetics. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with that, and, but for me, it really helped me, right? Like today when I did a demonstration, or even when you're practicing the lines, don't worry too much about exactly the order and should I do it this way or some lineages do it this way or should I end up in this way or should I open up the tiger's mouth more and all that. Don't worry too much about that. Only worry about the energetics. And I hope that tip will help you. Like, for example, when you're doing splitting, instead of going through the movement a lot, which is good too, you should do a lot of post training based on that. But just standing there into the metal post is not gonna help. You need to know how to connect the third eye with this finger, pushing forward and downward with this hand, synchronizing with the back hand going down and back, hollowing out the chest, coordinating the elbows of the knees, the shoulders with the hip, the top of the head spearing up, the back of the neck going backwards, opening up the vertebrae, feeling the dante between the point in the front and the back and the main one, right? That is actually more beneficial than just trying to get the form perfect. So I hope that helps, right? Okay, and what else? Oh, me and Chris, we're gonna be uh, filming the Five Fists, the Xing Yi series coming up in a full immersion program. I'll keep you guys posted when that is released. 
All right, guys, train hard and stay safe.